Ben Volan covers the NFL for the Boston Globe. His New England Patriots will be in town Sunday to take on the Miami Dolphins. Hello, Ben. Yes, my Patriots will be in town to visit <laughs> your Dolphins on Sunday. How are you uh, received in Boston? Because, you know, you covered the Dolphins for a while, and I think people liked you down here, from what I recall. <laughs> then you've gone up to Boston, and you come on here. Dolphins fans absolutely despise you every time you come on the show. You <laughs> wanted Mac Jones over to... Uh, I mean, you, you've you got a bunch of stuff in your arsenal that uh, that annoys Dolphins fans. How are you received in Boston by Patriots fans? Oh, there are plenty of Patriots fans who I annoy greatly as well. Um, I, I kind of break it down to, like, the normal fans that you see in everyday life, uh, I, I think, enjoy my work and, and read my columns and, and like what I bring to the table where I'm not just – writing kind of Homer content all the time, but then the internet world, like Twitter and like Barstool and like these people just don't like me because I don't know. I, I guess I don't cheerlead enough for the, the Patriots or whatever, but it's all in good fun. And uh, it's better to be hated than to uh, have them ignore you. So uh, that's that at least uh, either way, at least they're paying attention through that. Hey Ben, if you ain't got no haters, you're not doing nothing. Uh, you're not doing right. something right. That's what I always say. Ben, through all your career, here, down here, up there, through your career, has, has, like in, like you say, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, people just can type it. Has any fan ever confronted you face-to-face about something? Uh, um, kind of. I, I, I had a funny experience um, almost 10 years ago now where uh, I was out in public at night uh, with my wife, actually. We are going to see a band. And we're waiting in line outside this club and, you know, this like college kid comes and he, we talk and he's like, oh, uh, you know, hey, let's talk Patriots and whatever. And, you know, we talk about the, the game tomorrow and he's like, what do you think? I'm like, oh, they're playing the Eagles. They, they stink. The Patriots should be able to handle them. Kid was really nice. We had a nice conversation, went our separate ways. The next day, the Patriots uh, suffer this surprising loss to the Eagles. It was, it was a, a really bad loss. And uh, I see on Twitter, I met this jerk Ben Volan yesterday, and this clown thought they were going to win, and he just starts, like, ripping me left and right. I'm like, what the heck did I do? Like, where is this coming from? And and then a funny postscript, I, like, three years later, randomly at Logan Airport, uh, I'm sitting there, and and a kid comes up to me. He's like, hey, I don't know if you remember me. I was like, oh, yeah, you're that kid I saw online that one day. He's like, yeah, I said some mean things about you on, on Twitter. I'm really sorry I didn't mean that. And so uh, another example of how when you see someone in person, they're super nice, but then when they get on Twitter, they, they, they're they the keyboard warriors and they let loose with all the, the insults. I can, so that, that I, can, uh, I can one-up you there. The executive producer of this show, Alejandro Solana, I've learned since, I mean, this is years later, but when I was on the Levitard show, would constantly tweet about what a waste I am, what a loser I am. Nobody cares about my opinions. And only recently have all these tweets been unearthed from Solana just crushing me every time I cracked the mic on Levitard show. I mean, Ben, how many times do I have to hear about the Mount Rushmore, Fort Lauderdale area restaurants? <laughs> <laughs> we get it. You like Jay Alexander's, Hawk. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> I mean, if you go back through his Amazing. old Twitter, he loves Josh Friedman and the Frito Show and could not stand me. Probably still can't stand me, but now he kind of is forced to stand me. <laughs> Getting that check. <laughs> and, and any any that really makes Solana like turn red in embarrassment? No, nah, he loves that. <laughs> the, 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 the harsher, the better. He, he, he loves that. Now he just says it to my face. <laughs> now, it, now there's no holds barred. Disrespectful. Um, let's talk a little Dolphins Patriots here. Dolphins have won two in a row. And to be quite honest, I thought they looked decent in their losses to Arizona and Buffalo, you know, since two has been back. Can you buy them as a playoff team? Yeah, I think you can because in Roger Goodell's, you know, NFL, seven playoff teams, 17 games is all designed to keep teams alive, you know, longer than possible. And, you know, that seventh playoff seed right now, you know, Denver has it, but it's it's still up for grabs and there's six, seven games left in the season. So 
I, I could see the Dolphins going on a little run. They got the Patriots Sunday. They still have two games against the Jets. I mean, they, they can only afford like maybe one more slip up. Um, they're they're going to really have to go on a run, uh, but it, it is possible. And, um, you know, the Chargers, the Broncos, the Bengals, the Colts, like there, there's still some, some spots up for grab. It's, it, it's not all settled yet. And then with the Dolphins, like, and it's so funny that everybody talk about the Dolphins. They say, oh, well, Tua stays healthy. If Tua stays healthy, it's that way with a lot of damn NFL teams. But with him being back, now it was like it was 23, 23, 27, you know, 30. Like, it, what's the concerns that you have with the Dolphins? Like you're saying, if they can't have too many slip-ups, what's your concerns with watching the Dolphins where if they go play the top teams, and, hell, I'm throwing the Steelers in there now too, but we know the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Bills, the Steelers, those teams, what, what would their biggest concerns be? I mean, I was watching that Rams game a couple weeks ago, and I wasn't totally thrilled with the Dolphins' offensive line and the way that they were protecting Tua. And I didn't think Tua looked all that great either. And so I, I'd be concerned. Um, you know, I, I don't think the offense is necessarily clicking on, on high cylinder, you know, on, on all cylinders yet. Um, uh, and, and I don't know if it's going to be. You know, I think Tua, he just hasn't looked quite right compared to previous years. It hasn't, you know, the, the offense hasn't looked as dominant as it has in, in years past. And it, it's almost like, you know, with Tua going on, uh, injured reserve and missing all that time it's almost like they have to start from scratch again when when he came back and they're just now starting to build up some timing and um you know those are good wins over the rams and the raiders the last couple of weeks but I, I still think the offensive line is going to be an issue for the dolphins and um you know too i just don't know how high of a level he's playing at this year and I think, you know, that if not for the defense, I don't think they would have won that game against the Rams the other day. Um, and, you know, we'll see now against the Patriots. I think this is going to be a, a tricky game for the Dolphins. I was looking, they, I, don't, I don't think they've beaten them like a runaround mobile quarterback all year. They've lost to Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. Um, and there's one, uh, Anthony Richardson, too. So they, they've kind of struggled with the mobile quarterbacks, and, and Drake May has definitely proven to be slippery. So I, that'll be an interesting challenge for the Dolphins on Sunday. Who would you rather have as your quarterback moving forward, Drake May or Tua Tungavailoa? Great question. I, I promised you before, uh, Hawk, that I had a hot take. Here it is. It's extra spicy. Uh, I got to be honest, um, trying to not be a homer, just trying to look at this realistically, like, you know, who would I rather have? Going forward, I think Drake May is the better quarterback. Oh I think he's. I think Drake oh May's upside is going ben. higher right now. Ben. Um, oh, you are just scratching the surface with Drake May. He's making plays with no offensive line, with no receivers. He's running around like a one-man band out there. Um, he's playing really impressively. His game against the Rams the other day, a lot of people were really blown away by how well he played, especially – guys on the Rams that they were very impressed with Drake may and you put a little talent around him. I think the Patriots could have something. So I, I think it's bad news ben, for the Dolphins. I think the Patriots ben, have found something with Drake may. Ben, come on. You didn't learn your lesson with Mac Jones guys. Drake may is like 10 times the quarterback that Mac Jones is. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm 10 um, times the quarterback Mac Jones was. <laughs> Drake, I'm telling you, Drake May is a baller. Drake May can make plays. Mac Jones never was the quarterback, could never do the things on the field that Drake May does, especially with as little help as Drake May has right now. His offensive line, he might have the worst offensive line of any rookie quarterback of the last 20 years. And I'm not just saying that. There's a a tweet with a, you know, an, an analysis with charts and graphs and things that shows that he might have the worst offensive line in the last 20 years uh, of any rookie quarterback. And Drake may is still making plays. Uh, I'm, you know, Tua is, we, we've been down this road a million times. He's uh, a, he executes the offense very well, gets the ball. You guys know all about Tua, but I, I think he's still kind of a limited ceiling kind of quarterback. And I think Drake may, his potential is through the roof right now. Hawk, send, send Ben your uh, video, that triple option you ran in high school. He was sweet, man. <laughs> he was coming out. <laughs> he was I don't even want to read Ben the texts <laughs> that are coming in on the text line because they've never <laughs> been like this before. Hey, Ben, why the hell? Is it, was it a mistake not to start Drake then? Because they had, what, Jacoby in there? Should they have started him? 
I, I don't know about that because, I mean, look, Drake May is clearly the better quarterback, but so he missed five games. He, you know, he sat for the first five games. The offensive line was so bad. The receivers are so bad. It gave the team a little bit of time to, you know, figure some things out for Drake to see how everything goes. So like maybe, maybe one or two weeks earlier, they could have played him and, and it probably would have gotten them an extra win, but it's, you know, more injury risk. And like right now, Drake, I would like, if I were Drake, May, I would shut down right now for the year. You have nothing left to prove. You have shown everyone that you're a very good quarterback and there's nothing around you right now. And if Drake may gets hurt that, you know, like, you know, has to have, it suffers a serious injury and has to spend the off season rehabbing some, from surgery, that would be a disaster for the Patriots. So like he could shut it down right now and he's proven his point and the season is success for the Patriots because they've at least identified their franchise quarterback. But um, yeah, he's been fantastic. And it's not just me. I've got an article coming out tomorrow that, I mean, Everywhere you look around the league, people are like, wow, Drake May is really good. I mean, Kurt Warner, Dan Orlovsky, um, Ross Tucker, uh, guys from the Rams. uh, Everyone was – and and this past week against the Rams was Drake May's best game uh, because he wasn't just running around. He was making plays from the pocket. It it was very impressive. And if he had a coach with any stones who would go for it on fourth down, the Patriots probably would have won that game instead of – settling for so many field goals and punts. Um, but I, I'm telling you guys, I, I'm generally a hater. I'm generally loath to, to give rookies credit, but I think Drake May is the real deal, and he's going to be a really good player for the Patriots. Hey, Ben, settled debate that Hawk Crowder and I were having in the previous segment. So, you know, the list of the semifinalists came out for the Hall of Fame class of 2025. Eli Manning famously on that list. Is Eli Manning, and I think it, it matters to ask you because you've been in the New England era, uh, area, is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? I think he's going to get in. I personally would ha- think long and hard about it. I mean, obviously, you know, without the two playoff runs, he's not, he's not getting in. You know, his regular season stats don't really match up, his, and his playoff success other than those two years, um, you know, isn't enough, but the fact that he did win those two Super Bowls and he started 16 games every year for so long, you know, he's very durable. And the fact that he's in New York, like he is going to get in, but, and I'm, I'm not being like a, this is not me being a Patriots homer. Cause I really don't care less, but I, I just, I think he's a, a very borderline candidate for the hall of fame. And, and speaking of giant quarterbacks, explain to me this damn Daniel Jones thing. So they pay him and he can't play. So they make him play scout team safety. They jump over Drew Locke, who was second, to go to Tommy DeVito. Like I'm so confused by their decision making with the Giants. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre, and and you got to feel for Daniel Jones, who did nothing wrong except sign his name on a contract that paid him a lot of money, and now the Giants want to get out from it, which is their right too. So you know he's got a 23 million dollar injury guarantee next year where it's hard to collect that, but if he kept playing and if he suffered some big injury and he wasn't, and he couldn't pass a physical in March, they'd have to owe him that $23 million. So they've decided we're going to move on. The Daniel Jones era is done here. So they're just completely putting him on, on ice so that he doesn't get hurt. And he was out there today as fourth string quarterback playing like some scout team safety, but he might like end up leaving the team and they might just say, Hey, why don't you go home for the rest of the year? Instead of humiliating him like this, um, I, they owe, they owe Daniel Jones better than, than to humiliate him like what he went through today. And if they're going to just going to keep him on ice, they should just kind of send him home for the rest of the season. Um, as for Tommy DeVito, the only thing that makes sense, unless Drew Locks has been so bad that DeVito jumped him, which I think is possible, but I think it's more about the Giants. They still have like four home games this year and they need fans to keep, you know, interest in the team and to, to, to stay relevant in the local market and fans love Tommy DeVito. He's a good story. He's the local kid from Jersey and all that. So I just think this is the giant kind of cynical way to keep, you know, stay relevant and keep the fans interested when they've benched their starting quarterback and made him their fourth string. So it, it, it's a mess there in New York. And I got to think that Brian Dable has gotten some assurances that he'll be okay because I don't know if, if you're on the hot seat, I don't know if you want to bench your best quarterback, and make him your fourth string. So hopefully for Brian Dable, this means that he's going to be safe for next year. Who would you rather have, Lamar Jackson or Drake May? 
<laughs> uh, Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Definitely Lamar Jackson. Although, I mean, that was not a great performance against the Steelers last week. <laughs> Rank the quarterbacks in the AFC East right now. Drake May, and then who are the next three? <laughs> right. Drake May, huge gap. Josh Allen, huge gap. Um, hey, you know what? Uh, Drake May is already getting uh, compared to like people are already talking about him like he's Justin Herbert, which I think is a, a fair comparison. Herbert's got all the tools, but, you know, he just hasn't won this, games your, yet. This, but, your answers about Drake May have been Trump-like, where you keep saying people are saying, everyone's saying, and I haven't seen anyone say any of this. Well, because you live in a little bubble in Miami and you don't, you know, you don't seek out. Yeah, I haven't seen Barry Jackson say this at all. <laughs> Let me know when Clay Ferrero says this. Who oh, these people are? Ben Volan from the Boston Globe. You have outdone yourself, Ben. I'm telling you guys, Drake May, you're, you're going to be impressed. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Day. We understand where you stand on this. We got it. I, ordered my, I just ordered my jersey, Ben. <laughs> All right, we'll see you, Ben. All right, boys, enjoy. <laughs> ben Volan from the Boston Globe. He brought it strong. There you go. Patriots Dolphins on Sunday gave you a little bulletin board hey. material for radio listeners. <laughs> no one else, but for radio listeners, good bulletin board material. Drake um, May's overs? Drake yeah, May's yeah, overs? Yeah. I'm Ooh. taking the unders. There, he was so wrong with Mac Jones. I'm taking all the unders. <laughs> I think we're going to see Jacoby Brissett before the season's over based on how much love he just gave him there.